Hello and welcome to this video by Perfect Scores on 11th grade biology. Uh, this is Preetinder Kaur and if you want to visit our website for more such videos, you can visit at perfect-scores.com. Don't forget to like and share us at Facebook and if you have any suggestions or feedback, you can give it at perfectscores89 at gmail.com. So we are in the process of discussing a few basic features of so many uh, phylums that we have come across in the animal kingdom. And the next phylum that we have to do in this video is the phylum Mollusca. So if you remember from the previous videos, the largest phylum of the animal kingdom, and in fact the biggest group of organisms in the entire world, is the phylum Arthropoda. About two-thirds of all species on the earth are part of that phylum. Phylum Mollusca is the second largest animal phylum. Now a few basic features of this phylum are that they can be both terrestrial, that means they can live on land, as well as aquatic, that means they can survive in water as well, and both marine and freshwater sources. The level of organization is organ system, so that's an organ system level of organization. They have a bilateral symmetry. So bilaterally, they are symmetrical. That means their body can be divided into two symmetrical halves on the basis of only one plane. And additionally, they are triploblastic. They have a true coelom that makes these animals coelomates. Now, a few extra features about this kingdom mollusca. Their body is covered by a calcareous shell that contains a lot of calcium and it is unsegmented but it still has a distinct head, a muscular foot and a visceral hump. Plus, they have a soft and spongy layer of skin that forms a kind of a mantle over the hump. The mantle over this visceral hump contains soft and a spongy layer of skin. Now, the space between the hump and the mantle is called the mantle cavity. So the space between the hump and the mantle is called the mantle cavity in which gills are present. Gills are feather-like when you look at them. So these gills, they have both respiratory as well as excretory functions. Additionally, this head, which is always in the anterior, it has sensory tentacles. The most common example of this is a simple snail. Additionally, the mouth. It contains a file-like rasping organ called radula. That is the organ for feeding. About the fertilization and reproduction, these animals are usually dioecious, that means both sexes are present within one animal, and they are oviparous, they give birth to the eggs, not to life. And uh, the direct development is not there, so it's indirect, that means many intermediate stages are there. Indirect development. Some examples include Pila, which is the apple snail. Another example is the pink tata, which is a pearl oyster, then octopus, squid, cuttlefish, uh, tusk shell, chiton. All these are examples of phylum Alaska. So let's quickly revise the basic features. First of all, they can be both terrestrial as well as aquatic. They have an organ system level for organization with bilateral symmetry and they have a true body cavity and they are driploblastic. Usually they have a calcareous shell that surrounds the body. 
The body is not segmented but it is divided into an anterior head that contains the sensory tentacles. Then it has a muscular foot and finally a visceral hump that is covered by a layer of skin known as the mantle. The space between the hump and the mantle which is the mantle cavity contains feather like gills that help in both respiration and excretion. Additionally, the mouth also contains an organ for feeding that is known as the radula. And regarding reproduction, they are dioecious and oviparous. The development is indirect. So those are the basic features of phylum mollusca. The next phylum that we have to discuss is phylum echinodermata. Now in this phylum echinodermata, the body of all the animals is usually covered by an endoskeleton of calcareous ossicles. And that is why they get the name echinodermata, that means spiny bodied. So all of these are marine. The level of organization is organ system level. So organ system level of organization. The adults are radially symmetrical. That means you can divide them into symmetrical halves through any plane. So radial symmetry is exhibited by the adults. But the larva, the larvae are bilaterally symmetrical. And do you know what is the most common example? It is going to be the starfish. Additionally, they are triploblastic and they contain a true coelom, so we can call them all coelomates. The digestive system, it contains of a mouth, it contains a mouth on the lower ventral side. on the lower ventral side and there is an anus on the upper dorsal side on the upper dorsal side now the most distinctive feature of all these echinoderms is the presence of a water vascular system So water vascular system is present that helps in locomotion, that helps in capturing the prey and even in the transport of food materials and respiration. And excretory system is absent. So excretory system is not present. Sexes are separate. And the reproduction is sexual. Fertilization is usually external. And the development is indirect. So there is a stage of the larva that are bilaterally symmetrical, not radially symmetrical. Some of the common examples of this include the common starfish that is known as Asterias. So let me just write it like this, starfish. Additionally, Echinus, which is the sea turtle. Another example is Antidon, which is the sea lily. Then we have the sea cucumber, cucumeria. And these are just some of the examples. Lots of other kinds of echinoderms are present as well. So let's just go through the common features of echinoderms. First of all, they have calcareous ossicles on them. All of them are marine. They have an organ system level of organization. The adults have radial symmetry. And the larvae have bilateral symmetry. They are triploblastic and they have a true body cavity. The digestive system contains the mouth on the lower ventral side and the anus on the upper dorsal side. 
the water vascular system is present excretory system is not present sexes are separate so sexual reproduction takes place usually the fertilization is external development is indirect and there is a larval stage for example asterias other examples are echinus antidon and cucumeria so let's go ahead and study about the next phylum that we have that is phylum hemichordata now this phylum which is hemichordata this was earlier placed under um, you know it was placed as a sub phylum under the phylum chordata but now it is placed as a separate phylum under non chordata so let's go ahead and study a little bit more about hemichordata the first thing is that this phylum consists of a small group of worm like marine animals so it's a small group of worm like animals they have an organ system level of organization they are having bilateral symmetry they are triploblastic and they have a true coelom so they are coelomates now the body is cylindrical like a cylinder so it's long and round and it has an anterior proboscis then it has a collar and a long trunk so these are the three parts of the body of hemi hemichordate circulatory system is open so there are no blood vessels respiration is through gills excretion is through proboscis gland through proboscis gland sexes are separate and fertilization is external development is indirect and some of the examples are balanoglossus and sacoglossus So let's quickly revise what is there in this phylum Hemichordata. First of all, it's a very small group of worm-like animals. They have an organ system level of organization with bilateral symmetry, triploblastic, and they're coelomates. The circulatory system is open. Respiration is through gills. Excretion is through proboscis uh, gland. Fertilization is external, and development is indirect. The body is cylindrical, divided into an anterior proboscis, a collar, and a long trunk. two examples are balanoglossus and sacoglossus so this is all for this video in the next video we'll be taking up a bigger topic that is the entire phylum chordata so we'll be discussing the different features and the comparison of chordates with non chordates as well so that is all for this video thank you so much for watching this